Undefeated in his professional career, but it has been a career with anything but a smooth road against Sugar Baby Rojas. McKinney will need to be impressive in this performance at Atlantic City tonight. The time is now for Kennedy McKinney. Olympic glory is now four years removed, and he acknowledges he must make his move now. He's shown flashes of brilliance along the way in winning 19 with only a draw to mar his record. He has shown power too, like here against Adrian Areola. This 26-year-old has all the tools. And with wins like this one, and a big win over Jerome Coffey, he has made many believers. And if he can get over the next hurdle, he'll win over more converts. And perhaps he'll be on track for a world title match. But that next hurdle is veteran Sugar Baby Rojas, a former world champion who has come within a hair twice in the last year or so of winning yet another world title. At the age of 30, he sees a title in his future, and McKinney is his stepping stone. So, Al, let's talk then about the keys to victory. Well, for these two young men, uh, for Rojas, be more Holmes-like. And what do I mean? I mean he has to be like Larry Holmes and he has to be the veteran that makes the youngster make mistakes just as Larry Holmes. The big closing number, hey, just like the entertainers. He has got to take McKinney into the later rounds and really do well in the end. When I say seize the moment for McKinney, very important for him to be motivated from the beginning of this match. His whole career, in my opinion, is on the line to some extent tonight. Downstairs, upstairs, I don't mean PBS. I mean use the body and the head equally. This is for the USBA Junior Featherweight title, and let's talk then about the rules in the United States Boxing Association. And there are some changes here. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight. So remember, that's different from New Jersey. The physician can stop the bout. 10 uh, points to the winner, 9 or less to the loser. Three judges, no referee figures, and the fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round here. So it'll be Kennedy McKinney and Sugar Baby Rojas. And to meet him, here's Michael Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum and Top Rank Incorporated, along with the undisputed King of Beer, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard, Chairman Jerry Gormley, board members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Deputy Commissioners Lawrence Wallace and R. Yogi Hiltner, representing the United States Boxing Association as supervisor at ringside, Marion Muhammad, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Frank B. Doggett, attending physicians, Dr. Dominic Coletta Jr., and Dr. Charles Wilson, the timekeeper, is Arthur Spell. The scoring will be done by three judges, Gene Williams, Frank J. Cairo, and Al DeVito. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Harris, Atlantic City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the USBA Junior Featherweight Championship. The referee for this bout is Rafael Rojas. Uh, pardon me, that's Rafael Ramos. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with gold trim, and weighing at even 122 pounds, he's fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. This 1988 U.S. Olympic gold medal champion is undefeated as a professional with a record of 19-0-1, 12 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Kennedy King McKinney. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, also weighing an even 122 pounds, he's fighting out of Miami, Florida, and brings an outstanding professional record of 35 victories with eight KOs, only five defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the USBA Junior Featherweight Champion, Sugar Baby Roja. McKinney, Rojas, you see the pre fine instruction. Do you have any question? Protegete todo el tiempo. Protect yourself at all time. Obedece, obedece mi reglas, okay? Obey my commands. Let's go. So we are set to go. There's a look at Sugar Baby Rojas. A lot of experience in that corner, and the losses that he's had have been to quality opponents. Boy, have they ever. And he had two recently uh, against Welcome Nikita for a world championship, and there's a young man who dreams of fighting for a world championship. I must say this, Kenny McKinney looks as fit as I have seen him look in a long time. And I think you'll agree, uh, this morning he seemed confident, and he, like he really wanted this Yeah, problem. and there have been times where you and I have spoken with him the morning of a fight, and there's something distant in his eye. Very focused today and very confident. Not that he's ever lost as a pro, he hasn't, but 
he's a young man of which of whom you expect great things because when he won the Olympic gold in 88 there you see the knockout ratio with uh, McKinney getting a much higher percentage uh, but Rojas can punch make no mistake about that when he won the Olympic gold medal many believed he was the best boxer on what was a very good US amateur team And he is a guy who you have the feeling could be almost as good as he chooses to be. Side, right side. Come on, Mac. Double left hand from Rojas. mentioned those two matches with Bel Nel Welcome uh, Nasida who in uh, February and September of this past year both 12 round losses both split decisions um, one in Italy one in South Africa and uh, Al Banani the manager of, uh, of Rojas said you know we just really felt he wanted and uh, it was a bitter loss yeah well you and I have talked about we talk every now and then about decisions that we see here in New Jersey and even in Nevada. Well, you have not seen a decision until you've seen one in Italy or France. Boy, no, you haven't even come close to seeing one that's bad. And in one of those bouts, one of the judges had a 118-0-11 for Rojas, and the two others scored a one point for Nesita. And uh, in the other one, it was also a split. Neither man able to take any kind of control early in this fight. And I would expect the first round to be a feeling out process as it has been. One thing you know McKinney wants to do, he wants to go to the body, and there is a body shot. Jerome Coffey is a common opponent when McKinney knocked out and uh, Rojas beat over 12. Um, Coffey claims that if you punch to the body against Rojas, it will have a big advantage. And McKinney is a harder puncher probably than Jerome Coffey. Body work by Rojas. Coming to the end of the first round, as you said, this has been a feeling out process and a very difficult round to score as a result. We start the second round, both men struggling with their jab a little bit. Yeah, and Kennedy McKinney especially, 9 of 51 jabs, while Rojas landed 4 of 14. McKinney, he would very much like to get that punch in more. And here are the total numbers. And again, that would indicate pretty much what we said, that it's a feeling out round, especially for Rojas, only threw 32 punches. And uh, I ended up giving McKinney that round. Um, and of course, when you throw 70 punches to somebody else's 32, you're, you're going to end up with uh, getting more of those rounds, even if your percentage isn't so great. Rojas is really looking for the counter right over what sometimes is a lazy jab of McKinney and a jab that, as we've noted, isn't always landing to begin with. And you could tell that McKinney respects Rojas. He realizes he's in there against the guy who has been around the track. This is a guy who held the WBC championship, beat Santos Lazar, Lassiar, and also defended it once before he lost it to Gilberto Roman. But they're with the very best in the junior featherweight division. Nikita, I mentioned, who is current champion of the IBF, who he's battled twice. And at 30, yes, he's been through some wars, but that's but Kenny has McKinney a lot of ducked into a right hand. Yeah, and that's the right of Rojas really started to be a factor here. Remember Luigi Camputaro, who we had on uh, just a week ago, two weeks, yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago. He uh, beat him in April in Atlantic City. Um, Rojas said beating him in eight, knocking him out. Effective round so far for Rojas. Came up with the left hand and got there. Go, 
McKinney now finding more of a home for the left hook and the left uppercut. He's really looking for that punch. Straight right from McKinney, which has been mostly his power punch, but been working hard on that left hook also. End of the second round, and this has been a much better round for Sugar Baby Rojas. We'll be back. No punch, no punch out there. John? Here is uh, Rojas landing a good left hook, pretty decent left hook, to the uh, head of Kennedy McKinney in a round that was uh, pretty close. It's actually the right hand that really did more damage, I think, for Rojas in that round. But that one good left. Yeah, McKinney was... Uh, has been le even leaving his jab out there a little bit, which is why that right hand's been getting in there. And there you see uh, the number of punches, although, now I ended up giving it, you feel like Rojas might have won that round. Yeah, I thought he did, actually. I thought he controlled the round. Ring generalship. <laughs> <And quality. laughs> that phrase, and the quality of punches, possibly, as well. So it was, it was a very close round. <laughs> One of the more vague terms. Yeah, I love sort of like that. fresh frozen. Right? Yeah, I love that phrase. 20 to 18, uh, I have a McKinney head, but again, both those rounds pretty close, so don't, uh, don't get too upset if the judges at this point might have a little different. Well, that was a body shot. You could hear that. I yeah. think without a mic, you could hear it somewhere into Trenton. You know, it's funny, McKinney, uh, we mentioned he's four years removed from the Olympics. He's only 26 years old. Not exactly an ancient mariner. Which would actually make him Ken Griffey Sr., wouldn't it? That's right. It's very good. Ooh, I like that. Well, we have baseball on this network. I don't know a few baseball references. There's the counter right by Rojas. It's a punch that he has been getting in with a little more regularity. No punch, no punch. Patra, patra. This is a bout that feels to me like it's building toward, it really does. And that's what I meant. They're not, they're both starting to unload bigger punches. The swelling were in the eyes of Kennedy McKinney, I think. Underneath those eyes. I think you make a good there point. We, we touched on it earlier, but McKinney showed Rojas a great deal of respect early in this fight. I thought Rojas came on a little bit in the last round. That was a low blow by Rojas. Now it, you have the feeling that each man is settling into his own plan. And both men now looking to land some major league shots. Rojas has found what will work for him. Two things. The overhand right, and there it is. And the left hook to the body. And he's going to keep doing that until McKinney finds a way to stop it. That's what a good veteran journeyman does. It's going to be up to the younger McKinney to do something to counteract, and he, he did. did. Good straight left, yeah. That clearly hurt Ooh. Rojas, and I'm not sure Rojas has his legs back yet. Smiling to his corner, but we'll see. Good work by McKinney to go to the body, too. And the mouthpiece of Rojas is gone. They'll look for a momentary break. Very good round for both men, really. It was a very good round, very close round, too. Okay, vamos con eso. Mira a mí. No va detrás. Gotta cut high over there. See how Banani in there. In the Rojas' corner. No va detrás, sí. Porque él puede tocar. Siente. Es su pareja. Meanwhile, in the corner of Kennedy McKinney, you get Percy Richardson. You get back. You got the back. Wiley old veterans. There's a little swelling, as you can see. You got the back. Kenny Adams, the former Olympic coach. When you drop the right hand, you got to come back and look. If we drop the right hand, right eye is not a good thing. You still got to look. Finish up with the look. But he couldn't have a better guy working on it. Take out. Come on, let's go. Come on, Mac. That swelling is something that really could become a problem. No question about it. It's, yeah, even though it's underneath the eye, it's enough that you, you have to start to worry about it at this juncture in the bout. The fact of the matter is sometimes swelling like that can be even worse than a cut. Yes, because it closes, it obscures your vision. 
And you know Rojas would exploit that. And you can see Rojas with a high percentage in that third round. And the only reason it got that close is because McKinney hurt him a little toward the end of the round and he was able to get some shots in. But the body shots that Rojas threw were excellent in that round and the overhand rights. But look for Rojas really to work that jab and work on the eye of Kennedy McKinney. Rojas talking to McKinney in close quarters. They're both going after it right now. It's McKinney working the jab. And in the second round, he got very effective with that punch. Both those left hands were blocked by McKinney. This is going to be a match in which each man at different points is going to find something that will work. I think they're both pretty adaptable, both good at adjusting to things. So what you found that will work will work this round, but might not work the next. There's going to be a lot of adjustment during this bout. See, look there. Rojas was able to land the left hook in the last round. This time, McKinney adjusted, and he's keeping his right hand tucked in better. See, there. That punch isn't landing as good for Rojas. I'm sure also that that eye is dictating a lot of that for McKinney. It is pretty seriously swollen. The right eye especially, and that's over the eye as opposed to under. That's the one I meant, yeah. Yeah. And the mouthpiece drops again. Good move by Rafael Ramos. And they will replace the mouthpiece when there's a break in the action here in the state of New Jersey. The mouthpiece gets replaced. It's a rule in most, but great rule in boxing. Yes, great to is. add that. <laughs> nice left hand by McKinney. The he left. took a right hand. I'm sorry, Barry. The left is the, is the key now for McKinney. That's how he hurt Rojas in the last round. And remember I said in the first round, his left hook is, has been a, a, an improving weapon for him. And he's primarily a, a right-handed power puncher, McKinney. But uppercut inside. McKinney's having a pretty good round, even though Rojas is being active. He's not landing. Nice jab work by McKinney also. McKinney's defense has improved markedly in this round. And he's adjusted to what Rojas is doing. Yeah, getting away from those looping punches of Rojas now. Coming to the end of the fourth round. Good round for Kennedy McKinney. The swelling over the eye of Kennedy McKinney. They're putting the end swell on it, which is a cold piece of metal, basically. It takes the swelling down. We'll see how well that works. I'll tell you, when he came out, it still is in pretty bad shape. You can see it a little bit there. Look at McKinney throwing many more punches, a lower percentage rate, but he's landed 10 more than Rojas. And he is starting to pick things up in terms of accuracy. I thought that last round, his accuracy level was much better. Very precise with his punches, like that. Countering with the right very well now, McKinney. This is a bout in which I mentioned things change almost by the minute, and it does, because these are two clever guys in there. After four rounds on your card, two-point lead for McKinney. Got McKinney ahead, and I know the punches are very close. Head clash of heads there. And you could make the case for Rojas uh, winning more beaten. Of course, if you make it one round different there, it ends up being even. Yeah, I think you really could. I think there's been a lot of rounds that are close enough that arguably you could give them to either man. Well, and you were making the case for round two, or I think it was for Rojas, so. They want a double jab from uh, McKinney and then the right hand. He's throwing singular jabs. There's the double. Now they wanted the right behind it and then the left took following that. And again, a clash of heads. And a low blow at the same time. Second warning for the low blow. Chris Rojas wants to be a body punch. That's one area McKinney hasn't done too much of, as much as I thought he might, the body work. Come on, no punches. Rojas coming in with his head a little bit more in this round. 
in the lead right hand, and that's why I get hit with that lead right hand by McKinney. Nice shot by McKinney there, and that drove Rojas back into the ropes. And look at the body work from McKinney, how effective it is. Nice combination again, set up by the jab. And then a right to the body. That's precision work by McKinney. Again, a low blow by Rojas. He may get a point deducted. Yes. That could be a very big point, because McKinney is probably winning the round. So we could almost assuredly make it a two-point round, I would think. Watch your head, don't pull him, don't push him. Oh, again, very low by Rojas. Let me tell you, when Rojas shows that right there, he is throwing it with a lot of force in his as they say in the gym, bad intentions. He's been throwing almost all his punches like that. He's really forsaken the jab in the last couple of rounds. Good round for Kennedy McKinney, and with the point, of course, that would make it, as you said, a two-point round. And that eye is no worse than it has been. Don't push that hit, hey, okay? Keep both the shots working. Keep both, you gotta work on both sides. You know? and, and, and you didn't step up, you didn't step up enough then. You didn't step up enough then with the shots, okay? Step up, the rib shots is hurting him, but you gotta give me one to the left side. Just a dip down underneath. And when you dip and you make him miss, I want you to make him pay, okay? You understand me? Yes, sir. Turn the left hand short underneath, back over the top of the hook and give me the sharp right hand, okay? Understand? Give me the chopping right hand. You good, baby, you good, no problem. Take it down, relax, hold still, hold still and tell him down. Well, you heard Ken Adams, he wants body work, and we talked about that in the last round. And Kennedy McKinney working off the jab. Much more effective. Uh, 20 out of 41 in the last round landed for McKinney, and Rojas, 1 of 15. And you mentioned it, you said he's forsaken the jab. He certainly has. Loading up on those punches. And wow. there's the fifth round. What a difference. And added to that, the point taken away from Rojas. We mentioned that Rojas had been in against the champions, had been a WBC champion himself, has been in seven world title matches. And you can see that from the way he's boxing. He's very experienced. And you knew it would be a very tough outing for Kennedy McKinney. And even though he's ahead, it has been difficult because Rojas is a good boxer. The jab really making a difference for McKinney, even when it doesn't land all the time. But the respect that McKinney showed Rojas early in the fight is not there. McKinney obviously feels he's on equal footing here. Yeah, I think he knows, first of all, he, well, he knows Rojas is still dangerous. He knows he can hurt Rojas. And he even knows that in some instances he can outthink him. And that's not too easy. Double left hand from Rojas. One of the things that was working for Rojas earlier in the match was that left hook to the body and also the right. Now there he's trying to get back to that left hook. And also the overhand right. He hasn't been able to use those weapons as much in the last several rounds. And the eye of Kennedy McKinney no worse than it was. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit better than it was after the third round. It's the body work they want. But Ken Adams reminded Kennedy McKinney, don't just throw the right to the body, I want the left hand on the other side of the ribs also. Almost a full takedown by Kennedy McKinney. Notice the advertising for an interior decorator in blue on black trunks. Most of it on the inseam of Sugar Baby Roll. I want that guy too in my living room. I don't know about you. Let's see, we've insulted uh, now interior designers, uh, the fashion conscious uh, trunks of Michael Ward. Who else can we get in trouble with? I don't know. It only shows what eclectic guys we are, though. That's true. Good write by Kennedy McKinney. We read more than Ring Magazine. <laughs> And the eye now of McKinney a little bit worse. A little bit better 
run for Rojas, but I'm not quite sure it was enough. We'll be back with more from Atlantic City after this. Time since that loss to Ray Mercer a couple of months ago, he'll face Bobby Quarry. Brother, is he brother of Jerry Quarry? Yes, he is indeed. And Tony Tubbs also on that card trying to get back into the heavyweight picture, but then isn't everybody. 9 o'clock Eastern time, one week from tonight, we'll be in Las Vegas. You can see the eye of Kennedy McKinney. As we mentioned at the end of the last round, it is uh, appreciably worse right now. And that is with them, you know, Percy Richards are working that end swell over time. I really do feel that that could be a factor in the fight because Rojas, when he gets in close quarters, does throw that outside in left hand. Yeah. And if you can't see it coming, it could really be a problem for McKinney. You see how much he's thinking about working it right there. These are the jabs through the first six rounds. McKinney really winning the fight on his jab. And you would expect him to, but I'm sure he would like it better than the 34% uh, percentage of land. But a lot of that has to do with Rojas, too, who is very tricky and a good defensive boxer. I think if Rojas could get that left hook to the body going again, he would then be able to bring it up to the head a little easier and take advantage of the vision problems that McKinney may be having with the right eye. Rojas not trying to work the jab again. He had forgotten about it for a couple of rounds. Left getting in by Rojas. I also think the one thing McKinney would have liked to have done a little more of at this point of the fight is have done more body work. And tested the theory of Jerome Coffey. It also seems that at times Rojas kind of gets mesmerized by McKinney and, and is fighting him really at McKinney's range. I agree. Instead of coming in and really making this into more of a brawling effort. It's not that Raw is just a brawler, it's just that he would like a little faster paced bomb. And he's more effective when he can get inside the jab of McKinney. Yes. See graphically how that right eye is so swollen from McKinney. And there's the jab of Rojas. And there was a right hand behind the jab. And there was a right hand by McKinney. And what would you call that dance? I'm not quite sure, actually. Is that the karaoke? It might have been the karaoke. Oh, we're too young to know what the karaoke is. A round in which the things have heated up, and yet, oddly, the number of actual effective punches isn't that great. Tough round to score. Another tough round to score. End of seven rounds. Kennedy McKinney and Sugar Baby Rojas will be back. Throwing this combination and then uh, say, have you seen the karaoke? It's Very not good. a foxtrot or a polka. Ooh. See? That's, that's what good. it is. That's the song they made that famous. Fantasia, was it? <laughs> I'm sure all of America desperately needed that. <laughs> okay, maybe it wasn't a karaoke. Anyway. This scoring, and I gotta tell you, yes, I have Kennedy McKinney head by six points, and I will stand by it. Remember the point that was deducted from um, Rojas, but it doesn't feel like a six-point fight, does it? No, it yeah. really does. You know, I, I have to say that that feels right to me. Nice combination by Kennedy McKinney. McKinney doing a win or lose, fighting, as you said, a very creditable fight. This is our main event. It's a battle for the USBA Junior Featherweight title. Kennedy McKinney in the red trunks, the Olympic champion back in 1988. In what I really feel is his most impressive performance as a professional, at least in the fights that I've seen him in, and I've seen most of them. And he's in against the best guy he's fought, a former world champion, as I mentioned. Came within a, just a hair of winning the world title twice last year. Let me go. Great. Against Welcome Nikita. And, uh... 
you can feel, I think, in Kennedy McKinney, a resolve. He's got a badly swollen right eye. That was an excellent right hand. He wants this very badly. Yeah, this is a fight that he's really going after, and I've seen Kennedy McKinney in the past just sort of go through the motions and get a W. And that's what I think everybody feels. And Rojas standing in there throwing bombs to the body and the head, so he has not given up on this bout at all. And he knows, we talk a lot about McKinney. For Rojas, this is a pivotal bout. A loss here would, would put him down yet another notch and getting another title shot in any of the divisions might be difficult. And again, a warning for low blows by Rafael Ramos. Nice left hand by McKinney. After the lead right, good combination by McKinney. And again, you hit on it earlier. If Rojas was using his jab just a little bit more, some of those wild shots might be getting there. It's not that he lives and dies by the jab, but some of it would help him. And McKinney has stayed away from those body shots. Chopping right by Rojas, but this has been a round in which the precision punching of McKinney has been effective. Lots of combinations, too, by Kennedy McKinney in this round. Excellent round for McKinney. And McKinney building up what is getting to be in the category of insurmountable lead. And as you said, not that lopsided a fight, but nonetheless, McKinney doing more than enough to win almost every round. That's Al Benani, who is uh, speaking Spanish in that corner. Al has uh, had some rock. That's not Al, but it's an interesting observer in the ring. That's Kennedy McKinney. Hey, the right side is a bottom open for you, okay? The right side is open. Right body shot? Right body shot. Now, once again, once you slip underneath the wide open. Okay, there you go. Take your thumb down. You go, okay, first. And a reminder that when we get out of here, great champion. Tremendous potential, but obviously other problems. It's nice to focus in here on two boxers who are doing very well in the ring. And in Kennedy Kin McKinney's case, has helped clean up his act outside the ring as well. Through the first eight rounds, you can see how much McKinney is taking charge of this fight. Yeah, and they're landing at the same percentage, but McKinney throwing so many more. And the jab's been a very nice weapon for McKinney. And you know what else, Barry? He's throwing so many combinations. Kenny McKinney has always been a great combination puncher, and at times, like, like almost every boxer, uh, has not done it to the extent that uh, everyone would like, but he is doing it tonight. And doing it with that badly swollen right eye. There's an intensity in this performance, we've said it before, not to belabor the issue that we haven't seen from Kennedy McKinney. Absolutely. Even from the opening bell, as we said, when we saw him this morning, he just seemed to be a guy who had his mind on business a lot more than he has in the past. And McKinney now able to box against Ross. He knows he's got to be pretty far ahead. And so if he wants to box like this, it, it, it's a plus for him. Yeah, you can see his confidence really surging from about the fourth round on. He almost doesn't have to mix it up with Rojas if he doesn't want to too much. Nice right hand, straight right hand. And I think because he had the swollen eye early in the fight, too, it will make this win, assuming it is that, that much more impressive. Yeah, I think it, it definitely has. And, and it, it, because it's, it's provided one more obstacle for him. And the theory about McKinney, if the people that would be negative about him would say, well, he's a front runner. When faced with adversity, he might not respond. So far, he's responded extremely well to that. Well, I th yeah, I think the eye falls in the category of adversity. Yes, I would say so. 
And Rojas still throwing punches. It's not like he's stopped. He's just not able to land as effectively. And, and he's not getting, as you said earlier, he's not getting blown away, really. It's just that McKinney is doing enough to win every round. He's in these rounds, but not enough, not nearly enough to win most of them. Low blow again by Rojas. Remember, a point was deducted back in the fifth round for that. Little backhand and then a left hand. He actually turned southpaw to do that. Looked to me like he almost slapped him backhanded with the with the right hand. Wait a Take your time. Move with your free hand. Pull these trunks out. Take your time. Relax. Take your time. Relax. Remember how that was. Round ten coming up. Round number ten. We got three more. Now, no problem doing the same thing. Let's not let's not throw the jab to the body again. Okay, I don't like this shot. Right. Coming too close. To that one, okay? Everything else is working. Paint your jab, drop the right hand out, come back with the hook, move back to the right. Paint both sides, drop the right hand, okay? But don't forget about the body, though, okay? Now, now here's where right Kennedy Kinney bangs him with the right, and, and then uh, there's the straight right hand. And that has been a weapon that has really helped him. Here, toward the end of the round, here's what we were talking about. Well, it looked like a backhand, but it really wasn't. He almost turned, and then he hit him with a straight, with a straight jab. And That's right, using the Western grip. And why am I gesturing for you? No one can see this. I'm gesturing how the jab went, and no one at all can possibly see that. Imagine if you will. Outburst in, <laughs> right hand extended. <laughs> Pretend this is radio, okay? We do sometimes. <laughs> In the ninth round, then here is what's been happening in this fight. And and there, you know, that, that is really a good example. That's really the perfect example of what this fight is. The same percentage being landed, but so many fewer thrown by Rojas. Yeah, Rojas is just going to have to find something that has not been there, and, and I'm not sure it will be there. And you can see he will need to whack McKinney out. Certainly the way I'm seeing the bout, and um, we'll see. And even if you make the case, one of the rounds I know you were feeling maybe Rojas won, there's one or two that might go to him, but I, I can't imagine that too many would. Nice off right hand. hand. That stunned him, I think. At least knocked him off balance. Three jabs by Rojas. This is a world-class performance by McKinney against the world-class fighter. Let him go, let him go. Yeah, tonight, Kennedy McKinney really looking like the fighter that everyone around him, I think, hoped that he would be following the Olympic Games. And he's achieved that after, you know, having some ups and downs. But the ability was never questioned. And when you have the ability, if you get the intensity and the wherewithal, you can make it happen. And this is not to say that he's been losing fights. No. He's won all his fights, and he's had 12 knockouts along the way with just the one draw. But he's made it a little tougher on himself than he's really needed to. But not tonight. And still, Rojas hardly giving up, throwing hard punches. I think that left hand might have hurt Rojas. Yeah. He was stunned earlier in the round. So you can put this round on the Kennedy McKinney side of the ledger also. End of 10, we're going 12, and Kennedy McKinney's in complete control. Start the 11th round, and Sugar Baby Rojas is going to have to knock his man out. He's shown no indi any, any indication of being able to do that so far. McKinney has just owned the fight since about the fourth round. And uh, the percentages stay the same, pretty much, but the numbers are so big in beha behalf of Kennedy McKinney.
So, Al, who are those junior featherweight champions? Funny you should ask, Kabir. <laughs> and I know they're on the lips of everybody. I mentioned, of course, welcome Nikita. He's the IBF champion, and that's the guy that both these men are shooting for. The Rojas would love a rematch again, and the Kennedy's pe McKinney's people feel that's the man they should go after. Daniel Zaragoza, who is the WBC champ, is going to fight Tracy Harris Patterson probably in May. That should be intriguing. Yeah, there's a guy who's waited a long time for a shot. Very much so. And uh, Raul Perez is the WBA champ. So those are the, the champions in uh, this division. And a good bunch. Raul Perez is the WBA champion in every division. <laughs> every single one, yes. Except for the cruiserweight where... Oh, yes. Sugar Ramos. The sugar, no, Sugar De Leon. Sugar De Leon. That's what I meant. I meant that. Set you up for these lines. I know, that's true. I couldn't remember his name before either. <laughs> that's right. No, Sugar De Leon is not the cruiserweight champ, but he was for about 50 years, as Barry has pointed out. Well, now, this, this is a, a time in the fight where Rojas feels he's been 12 many, many times. This should be his time, but it isn't ending up being. This is as far as Kennedy McKinney has ever gone. He's never been into the 11th round, but Kennedy is boxing smartly, using all his wild, and getting by. Yeah, and he really hasn't lost anything either. Kennedy McKinney doesn't seem the least bit fatigued to me. No punches, come on, wait. Let's go. Well, if you wanted a confidence building performance to set the tone for looking for a world title, this has to be it. And you like to see that. Kennedy McKinney, one of the nicer guys amongst the host of nice people in the sport of boxing, amongst the fighters. Yeah, and, and you have to say that he, since he has overcome the drug problem and got himself back into things here, this is it's a nice story. Yeah, you can't help but root for it. And you know what's intriguing about Sugar Baby Ramos? The thing is... Oh, oh, Rojas. Rojas. Uh, Ramos. See, you got me saying Ramos. Maybe it's De Leon. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's the first time I've done that tonight. I'm going to blame it on you, huh? The thing about him is he's not a spent fighter. He's not used up. He's, he's taking a beating here tonight, but it's not for lack of his trying or, or his skills. And McKinney right now really administering a beating to Rojas. He's had Rojas hurt a couple of times. Nice combination. Big round. Give me a lot of water. Venga aquí. Venga aquí a mí. Venga aquí a mí. Venga. Usted tiene que no feel. Este niño, usted pide, pide el título. ¿Siente? ¿Cómo siente? Here is Kennedy McKinney with the straight right hand. It's been an excellent weapon for him, just as the left hook has been, just as the jab Terrible. has been, just Pick as the okay. uppercut. Keep working, no, no problem with working. As a matter of fact, the key is to back him up, stay up on the shots, don't get careful, okay? Take some water down. This is it, baby. Finish strong, don't take no chance. That's the, that is the key, okay? Don't get Ladies and gentlemen, here in high of Atlantic City, this is the 12th and final round. How about a round of applause? Nice. Kenny Adams still wearing his jammies. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a casual outfit that Kenny has on. I'm going to tell, tell him you said that, too. <laughs> He'll hear it, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. In the 11th round, more of saying McKinney is just taking complete control of this fight. He had Rojas hurt a couple of times. He heard the round of applause he got when he came out for this final round, and it is well-deserved tonight. And Kenny Adams, who we did about a moment ago, is to be congratulated for getting his fighter ready to fight the biggest fight of his young life. Yeah, they did a very nice job of preparation, and McKinney worked very hard. <laughs> And your card, Al, is just about a shutout for McKinney. The jab of McKinney, just so effective. And Rojas with a good left hook to the body. Now, make no mistake. Rojas is still dangerous. He's throwing his punches hard with good leverage. But McKinney is just doing everything right. McKinney has taken a quantum leap forward in this fight. Very much so. And, and in both skills and, and determination and all the other intangibles you'd like to throw in. 
Nice combination by McKinney again. One How many of his, times have we said that? Uh, one of his stable mates, Eddie Cook, will fight for the World Bantamweight Championship March 15th on ESPN. A World Championship match right here on ESPN. Hard to believe. You ever think you'd see the day? Got over that hip pointer. Yes. And now he's healthy, and that's why he's fighting for the world title. Hit a table on the way out of signing a contract for the championship fight. <laughs> You're such a cynic. <laughs> Well, this has been an artistic endeavor by Kennedy McKinney. The, the, the right eye has remained swollen since, what, around the second or third round, really? Yeah, and credit Percy Richardson for doing a great job on that. And, of course, credit McKinney with defending it very well. And he has never been able, Rojas, to get to the left and take advantage of that by landing that left hook. He'll get a big round of applause at the end of this fight, and it will be his just reward. Five seconds left, and listen to the crowd for Kennedy McKinney. It's a young man who knows what he has done. He points a glove down to us and says, hey guys, guess what? I did it, and he did. He did. There are moments, there are moments when you see about any athlete go on to a new plateau, right? And that's what we saw tonight. I think that's absolutely right. And Kelly McKinney was very close to falling into that also ran category. Even with all the wins yes. and no losses and the Olympic gold medal, you could say that because the nature of the drug problem even had been suspended by the Nevada Commission. And now he is literally on the verge of a, a world title shot. Yeah, it's a very impressive win for him against, as you said, an opponent who was more than worthy. Total numbers in this fight, the percentages remain the same, but look at McKinney, almost a thousand punches thrown. Threw quite a bit, 38% right in there at a decent figure. I'm sure you'd like 45, but 38, there's nothing wrong with it, especially when you're keeping your opponent from landing even close to that. And I think he got better as the fight went on, too, which says something yes. about him. And you know what's interesting to me? He managed to execute this victory without throwing too much to the body. That's surprising, because I thought that might end up having to be something you would have to do during this match. We said at the very beginning of the fight that McKinney looked in excellent shape. I think he was. And you really have to hope for this young man that it's a sign of good things to come. Here's Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Harris Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Frank J. Cairo scores the belt 120 to 107. Aldevito has it 118 to 109. And Gene Williams scores it 119 to 108 for the winner by unanimous decision. The road from Olympic gold to glory continues for the new USBA Junior Featherweight Champion, Kennedy King McKinney. So Kennedy McKinney is not just a winner, but a very impressive winner. He's got the USBA Championship. There's one more he'd like to get. Back to talk with him after this. Yes, it's a nice belt, but yes, this man would also have like to have yet another one. And right now, Kennedy McKinney with Al Bernstein. Now, Thank you, Barry. Yes, Kennedy McKinney would like to have another belt in addition to this one, but this is a good start. And it's a start with a performance, Kennedy, that in all truth had to feel like the best of your pro career. Yeah, but first of all, I'd like to thank God. Say hello to my mother, Robin McKinney. I love you. To Bevo Covington and French out Peter Moore in Las Vegas. It was a good fight. I mean, I, the guy was a good fighter, yes. but I was in good shape. Coach Evan trained me. I had five weeks to prepare for this fight because I knew if I won this fight, then I would be a world title shot right after this. So I had to come in with this fight to have a good showing. That way, it won't be no doubt, hey, I should be number one contender right now. I have to tell you, this morning, it, it seemed as we were talking to you, you felt like you were more intense about this fight than any other fight that you've, you've been involved in. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is, because I was in great shape. I mean, we trained. Coach Adam got into, got, got into my butt. He made me work. He made okay. me run. He did the right thing. I was in perfect shape. And thanks to him, I was in All right. Hey. A quick report part from Ken Adams. Hey, I had to give him an A. I mean, he really looked good. Uh, he did what we asked him. Uh, that's the key. 
All right. Akbar Muhammad, who's managing Kennedy McKinney, you, uh, can you get him right into a world title match? I think that's exactly what we're looking for. I think he showed tonight. He beat a guy tonight, two-time world champion. Mm -hmm. He shows he's ready. I mean, we're just ready to go. Welcome, welcome to Cedar. That's the guy we want. That's the guy we want. <laughs> I and thought you were going to say that. All right. They want to issue a welcome and, a, and a, to him. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I did it, everybody. Boy, he did do it. And he did it. In, he did it in a fashion that was very special. Kennedy McKinney taking that next step up to another plateau. We've got one more plateau, a short one, albeit, when we come back. Harris at Atlantic City, the main event is now over. We have a new USBA Junior Featherweight Champion in, by the name of Kennedy McKinney. You know, we seem to use the term uh, last hurrah for a lot of fighters. We usually use it when a fighter's really kind of at the end of the rope. That wasn't so much the case with Kennedy McKinney from a boxing point of view, but maybe from an outside the ring point of view, boy, did he make a lot of believers tonight. He needed it very badly. And didn't you sense when I was talking to him that he knew he needed it very badly? He said, I, I did it, right? As if, uh, you know, to reaffirm to himself. Very good performance by him. We talked about the intensity. He's always had those skills. It was putting them all together and using them throughout a fight. And I'll tell you what, I think he's ready for a world title match. Welcome.